So welcome, where we concluded with exercise one yesterday, observing by the self by the self and the conclusions are before you. So the seven steps that we discussed, starting with step one, the most important and the one that the step that we keep having to come back to that we as the consciousness, the self are to observe ourselves, our imagination particularly the desire, the thought, the expectation and the imagination. And there also the focus can be on the feeling. And we have to observe this feeling every moment. In the second step, we were able to observe that some feelings are natural to me. Those are the ones that I want to continue with. Those feelings that are not natural to me, those feelings I don't want to continue with. I don't um, want to be with that feeling for a longer time. Why? Because in step three, we can see that when we have a natural feeling, we are in harmony within, in a state of happiness within. But whenever we have a feeling that is not natural to us, we are in disharmony within, we are disturbed, we are unhappy. Then in step four, that very decisive step that I'm the one who is deciding the feeling that I have, it's not anything outside. That means I am only responsible for my own happiness or unhappiness, 100% responsible. Even though we may have seen this from time to time, even though we think we know this, when we are asked, we can recall this, yet so many incidents may be happening when we base our feeling on whatever happened in the outside, the situation outside or somebody's behavior. That's because we have very deep rooted assumptions and seeing it once, twice, thrice is one thing. But being aware of it every moment, then again you have to come back to step one and see that I slipped. I was not aware. And that time my assumption took over. And because of that assumption, when I thought with this assumption that the other is responsible for my happiness or unhappiness, then I started complaining about others and I thought the problem was with them that I was okay but again when I noticed that I had lost awareness and I can see that I am responsible for my own happiness or unhappiness then I stopped complaining about the other and I start making effort I start working on my own self-development so that I may transform. In fact, now instead of complaining about others, I can also look at it as an opportunity that is helping me to focus on my transformation in a faster manner. If things were all normal outside, if things were all to my liking outside, I would think that I am anyway a calm person and I don't need anything more to be done. But the moment there is situation outside or a person's behavior outside, which is not to my liking, that is the actual challenge for me. That is the point where I have to see whether I am aware or not, whether I can be calm within or not. Of course I can, but am I able to stay calm or not? Am I able to have the right feeling for the other or not? So those are the points where we can see that had it not been for the outside situation being um, something not to our liking, we may never have gotten that opportunity at that moment to work on ourselves. So these can be all learning curves for us. And we can look at it like that rather than suffer the behavior or complain about it. So in step five, this is what we were doing. We were trying to see whether we made the decision of the feeling on the basis of understanding or on the basis of some preconditioning, some assumption, some acceptance we have of things without really knowing. If I decide on the basis of understanding, understanding means 
seeing the reality the way it is seeing the behavior for what it is rather than assuming something without knowing then i can choose the natural feeling and be comfortable as an example somebody is shouting getting angry if i am basing it as on understanding i'll be able to see that this person is shouting is angry is disturbed within is uncomfortable within and with that discomfort that person is just expressing that discomfort when anything becomes too difficult to handle then the person has an outburst outside and that is what is happening but if i work with if i am deciding on the basis of an assumption without knowing suppose i assume or i perceive this person as shouting at me now it becomes a very different situation for me now i start defending myself now i start complaining about now i start shouting back to try to dominate over the other and that assumption plays out in that process so even though i have heard this even though i may be practicing it there will be moments when i slip and when i do that i don't need to keep reacting the moment i realize that i slipped i can go back to step 1 and start observing and seeing that even in that situation i was still responsible for my own feeling and i could easily have the right it required me to be aware and decide on the basis of understanding so then in step 5 we could see that we do need to ensure the right understanding within ourselves without that these other assumptions will keep playing out and if they are in line with understanding then i will be fine i will be happy i will be calm if they are not in line with understanding then i am going to be disturbed i am going to be unhappy and that is not something i want so we could see that we need to ensure the right understanding within ourselves so in step 6 we were asking the question which which are the feelings that are in line with understanding which are those feelings which are naturally acceptable and all the feelings that you have they can be clubbed into these three feelings of relationship feeling of harmony and feeling of coexistence so these are the ones that are going to make me happy or with these feelings i am happy so i need to understand these and in step 7 we try to do this at one moment two moments three moments and if we are able to do this if we can ensure say for example the feeling of relationship if i can ensure the feeling of relationship at one moment and i experience the calm and i experience the happiness within now i have i have been able to see this at that moment so if i can see it at that moment i can also see it at the next moment and the next moment so then i know that if i can ensure this every moment i can be in a state of continuous happiness so therefore i need to understand this relationship the harmony the coexistence completely and then my feelings and thoughts will naturally come in line with these and we can be in that state of continuous happiness of course this is a lifetime or sometimes a work of many lifetimes even it takes time it takes effort and it takes perseverance with it not giving up continuing to pay attention that doesn't mean reacting paying attention as in observing not becoming unhappy that things are not moving but going back to observing even when we become unhappy going back to step 1 observing why i am becoming unhappy because i am having a feeling that is not naturally acceptable to me and going back to step 6 seeing what is naturally acceptable to me step 6 or step 7 and then in that moment ensuring that feeling which is naturally acceptable and seeing my state switch from unhappiness to happiness the more times i do this the more effort i make the more i pay attention inside slowly that becomes my sanskar so assumptions that are in line i continue with them assumptions that are not in line with this they slowly weaken and drop off if i don't keep thinking about it the more i think about assumptions that disturb me 
the more I hold on to them. So if we focus on the higher, the lower almost effortlessly drops. That's why we have to keep referring to the natural acceptance. So with this, if anybody has any sharing, any observation, we can take it now. Then we'll move on to exercise two. So exercise two, we are observing the body. We are not just observing the body. We are also observing the interaction that is there between the self and the body. And who is observing? Of course, it is the same self. I am myself observing. So now you will notice what we are going to be doing is along with exercise one, while observing the self, I am also going to be observing the body. And I'm also going to be observing the interaction between the self and the body. And I will also be observing the outside. And it may seem like, how is it possible to do so many things at the same time? But the self does have the potential. We have just not been using that potential. So now we can start applying this. We can start trying to see it within ourselves practically. And slowly we will find our competence grows and we are able to do that. Just like in the beginning for exercise one also, we said that we can observe the self and at the same time, we can also do whatever we need to do outside, which means we are also paying attention outside. And at the same time, we can be paying attention inside also. So somebody is talking, we are listening to them. We are interacting with them. We are paying attention to what they are saying. But at the same time, we can be paying attention inside also. Sometimes when, you know, earlier and even now it may happen sometimes, you are paying attention to something inside. Some thought about something at home while somebody else is talking. Say somebody is talking, they are telling you something about themselves and you're listening, but you suddenly remember something of more significance to you that perhaps you left your um, left water to boil or milk to boil on the gas and you have forgotten about it or some such thing. Now you will notice that whatever is going on inside, you're paying attention to that and you're not paying attention to what that other person is saying. This happens very often. That something else that we think is more important is going on inside. In this case, it may be that you have to run and turn off the gas or something that needs your immediate attention. But you will notice that this is happening very often. This is why we are not listening to somebody because we think that is not important enough for us. Something else is more important. And so we may be busy with our imagination. But it is possible to observe the imagination and at the same time observe the outside. Observe the interaction between the self and the body and the interaction between oneself and another self. And all this, the self has the potential, has the capacity. We may not have been able to reach that capacity yet, but we do have the potential and we can work towards it. Again, this is just to remind that this is one way of looking within. It's not the only way. There are many, many methods as we had talked earlier. But it is important for us to stay with whichever methods we are comfortable with. Sometimes it may be, you know, while we are doing this, we may also want to read some traditional texts. We may also be doing some practices which we were doing from before or whatever it may be. But stay with the method. If we keep shifting from one method to another, this is also a reaction because we want things to happen faster than they can. It's like you want to have a plant grow. So you plant the seed and next day you're looking and you don't see the plant. So you go and get some more manure and you go and get, uh, you, you know, take out that seed and put it in a place where you think there will be more sunlight and so many things we might do. But the whole thing is that it will take its own time. So 
in our case also when we are trying to work on ourselves we may have many many assumptions that are clouding our vision so it will take time to tease out all this it will take time to be calm within and the more we are reacting the more we are disturbing that state within can you see that so the more difficult it is going to be or the longer it will take for us to settle things down so important thing is to stay with whatever practice is working for you and continue with that so this is just one way of looking within there are many many ways here also the steps that we are mentioning in this exercise this is one possible set of steps that has been put forward it is not the only set of steps it is not that you cannot have more or less steps it is not that you cannot have any other step this is one formulation and if it is helpful for you you can stay with it and continue with it this chart should be very very familiar to everybody who has been through the workshop whether offline or the face to face workshops this is something that we talk about when we discuss the human being that the human being is a coexistence of self and body that there are two parts within the human being what we are referring to as the human being one is the body and one is the self and these two are not physically connected rather they are submerged in space and there is a coexistence and as we keep observing more and more ultimately we will be able to see that all the units are submerged in space and every unit is in coexistence now if you look at the left side of this about the self all this that we had talked about that there is a need and it is continuous and it is qualitative now we can see it in practice isn't it we need this happiness in continuity we can see that there is not a single moment in the whole day that we want to be unhappy we may be unhappy at many moments but if we ask what is our need what we want we'll be able to see that we want to be in happiness in continuity and we can also see that it is about the feeling it is not about how many cars i have or what a big house i have or you know what somebody else is doing or not doing it is about what i feel within this is deciding my happiness now we can see that practically then this thing that it is fulfilled by right understanding and right feeling so we just use those terms right understanding right feeling right understanding right feeling out of this the right feeling i can have this very moment and experience it and see that i feel calm i feel comfortable i want to continue with this feeling this i can see even right now this moment the right understanding when we see when we talk of that this is seeing everything the entire existence everything the way it is not just on the basis of my own perception but what it actually really is so for that we have to work our way up to the highest activity within ourselves that activity of realization only then can we have the ability to see directly everything the way it is because then we will be able to see the subtlest reality that is space and how being in space we are all connected we are all submerged in coexistence so this fulfillment to some extent we may be able to see it but to be able to see it to understand it in completeness we have to work our way all the way up to realization and now we can see that the activity of desire thought expectation it is going on continuously within us we are able to observe it we are able to observe our thoughts we are able to observe our feelings that are linked with the desires and we can see that they are there all the time something or the other is going on some feeling or the other is always there some thought or the other is always there 
some expectation from the outside is always there. And also this last bit about the response, this recognizing and fulfilling. Is it based on assuming or knowing? If you go back to the step five of exercise one, we were asking that question. Is my feeling based on an assumption without knowing or is it based on right understanding or knowing? Because that will decide my recognition and fulfillment. That will decide my behavior outside. That will also decide my happiness within. So you can see now the significance of knowing because everything that we experience within, everything that we do outside, the happiness or unhappiness we experience within and our behavior outside, this recognition and fulfillment within us, this can be made definite once we have right understanding in completeness, once we are at the knowing. Then our acceptances are based on knowing, based on the way things are. Right now, our acceptances are based on some preconditioning, some assumptions, something that we have perceived to be true but may not be true. So therefore, we don't know. Our recognition and fulfillment keeps changing. Therefore, sometimes we are happy, sometimes we are unhappy. And this is continuing. So now we will take a look at the body also. All this we have heard before, right? That the need of the body is something very different from the need of the self. While in the self, I want to be happy all the time. The need of the body is something very different. The body is not craving happiness. I am the one craving happiness. The body has some food, some physical facility, maybe clothes to protect, shelter to protect. Those are the needs of the body. When it comes to the feeling, feeling is something within the self. Feeling is not there in the body. So when we say the body tells me this, the body saying this, a lot of times we hear this, listen to your body as if the body is saying something. So many sensations may be there in the body, but who is really making sense out of that? Who is really figuring it out? What that means? That is the self. So this clarity between the self and the body even though we may have seen this chart many times, we may have talked about it many times, still that deep-rooted assumption that I am the body because I can see the body through the gross eyes, that keeps playing up from time to time. So ultimately, we have to be able to see these two as separate and see that the each, each unit here has different types of needs which are fulfilled differently. The need of the body for all the things that we keep gathering. Why we are gathering, if we ask, it is really for the body. So if it is for the body, then we can also see that the body requires in limited quantity and we can measure that quantity and we can decide how much is required. So I can then find out the need of the body and work for that. But when I don't have this clarity, I am trying to fulfill my need for happiness through this body because I think this is the way, this is who I am. Therefore, all that confusion. Also, if we look at the activities, we'll see that there are many activities going on in the body. Some may be going on by my specific instruction, like when I give instruction to the body to eat, to walk, the body walks, the body, the hand goes to the spoon or to the you know, chapati or bread, picks it up, puts it in the mouth and so on. There are also many activities which are going on within the body where I may not be giving specific instructions, but I have this willingness to associate with the body. And just with that, these activities are taking place in the body. For instance, the heart is beating, 
the blood is pumping, the circulation is happening, the digestion is happening. And you will notice that I am involved in this, even though I may not be specifically giving instructions, because whenever my feeling is not right within me, whenever I am disturbed, whenever I am unhappy, we can see the impact of this on the body. If I had absolutely, you know, no role in this, then they should continue regardless of whatever my state is. But you will notice that when you are very disturbed, your heart rate may be very rapid. The heart starts beating a lot faster. If you are angry, your face may become flushed red. Again, your heart may beat what you feel as very uncomfortably fast or it almost becomes louder. Your um, hands may start trembling. So all this effect on the body, we can see when there is change in the activity within me. But the activities in the body are temporary. When the activity Activities within me keep continuing. This we were able to see that the thoughts are going on all the time, feelings are going on all the time. But in the body, you can see that there is gap. Some gap is there. It's not continuous without a break, without even a break for a moment. Even the heart rate, which we might think that you know heart is pumping and all that, but you will notice that there are. You know, if you look, if you if you put a stethoscope on the chest, you will hear. That there are two sounds. There is one sound, then there is a gap, then there is a second sound. That's because the sound that comes, one is when the heart is contracting, the heart muscle, right? When the blood is getting pumped out, then there is a gap, end of contraction. Then slowly the heart muscle relaxes. The, the blood flows back into the heart from the other side. That is the second sound and like that. Even if you'd say about the breathing, we breathe in, you can't keep breathing in. At some point, there is a stop to the breathing in, pause, then there is a breathing out. But we don't generally pay attention, so it looks like this is just going on continuously. If you look at the response of the body, the body has the ability to recognize and fulfill recognizes its relationship with every other unit and fulfills that relationship in a very definite manner. Here there is no assumption playing a different role. Because there is no assumption, there is no indefiniteness. The recognition and fulfillment is a certain way all the time. No assumption is coming in the middle. So it has got a very definite recognition and fulfillment. So for instance, you know, if you feed it something that is nurturing, it will digest it and it will assimilate it, that food. That means it's recognizing that unit and fulfilling that unit. It is interacting with it in a way that it is nurturing for the body. If you assume that something that is harmful is actually good and you still feed it to the body. And the body can't do this change in you know, assumption and something else. The body will still very definitely recognize it as something that is, you know, it will, it will behave in a definite manner such that what was harmful, what you took as harmful, even though you thought it was right, it will still be harmful for the body. And we can see this very simply when we look at junk food. I may like something and when I am not aware, I may overeat something just for the taste without the realization that this is going to harm the body. At that moment, I think my happiness lies in eating that sweet or that tasty food. So with that assumption, I go ahead and overeat and eat more and more and more in those moments when I'm not aware that my happiness is coming from within. It's not coming from this food outside. So when I do that, afterwards, 
the impact on the body is still going to be the same definite manner that it is going to be harmful for the body so we keep doing that and then we suffer the consequences because ultimately the impact on the body will be there but who will suffer it the body doesn't suffer then i am the one who is suffering because i am not liking those sensations that i am feeling there may be pain there may be discomfort so many things so all this we have to try to see practically there is one hand raised we'll take that and we can also take other observations and then we'll go to a 10 minute observation yes surya kanchi hello good morning didi didi actually my question is related to previous that is the uh, step 1 mhm and in that it is step 6 mhm that is exercise that is one. all yeah yeah uh, step 6 mm-hmm. in one that is a uh, subset 6 uh, there mm. that is uh, all the time our feelings observing at all the moments our feelings mm mm-hmm. so mostly i think all the times observing our feelings uh, even we feel that they are naturally acceptable mm-hmm. but i think in practice that does not happen what what i observed hmm right now it may not be happening but the possibility is there yes i think Attention it may yeah uh, it may be because of some of this uh, possibilities which happens uh, there is big in context of the situation what i observed while sending the new year wishes to our friends mm mm-hmm. so while we are choosing to whom we have to send it at the moment we may have even still the feeling of relationship but when we observe the choosing uh, we are choosing the option so i think in this context maybe one is we may not be possible to send our wishes to all maybe we are choosing it uh, which whoever is very closer to us i think here there is a feeling uh, can we think of there is a feeling of opposition also but anyway i don't feel it is opposition but maybe we are choosing it in a priority basis so can you throw light over the see if you are lo- referring to the activity outside then the body has some limitation and you ha- you can only send so many messages right or you will have to spend so much time to s- send those messages yes yes but when it comes to the self and it comes to the feeling within that is just momentary that feeling right the very yes. next moment you may have a different feeling possible isn't it yes yes now in that feeling or whatever feeling i am having at any moment where i am looking from what i am seeing outside lot of times i am basing my feeling on that because my feeling from within is not ensured that means what because until and unless i get to realization until and unless i can see everything exactly the way it is i may not be able to see that relationship that already exists so in that sense that is why i don't have that feeling of relationship for all but once i get to realization and i can see space and i can see that we are all interconnected and all of that then i can certainly see that you know for for all of us we are all immersed in space and that relationship is there between each one of us but right now because i am not able to observe that through the self i am trying to observe everything in this existence through the body through my gross eyes so through the gross eyes that subtle cannot be observed through the self it can be observed but what i am trying to see through the eyes that cannot observe this subtle reality so right now through the eyes what it looks like is this tree is separate 
that human being is separate from me. This one is separate from me. That is separate from me. Right? We can observe this. Yes, yes. Yes. So as long as I'm seeing anybody else as separate from me, then I'm not able to see this connection between the two, which I may be able to see when I get to realization and I can see the space also, and I can see the submergence in the space. Okay. Can you theoretically see this? Yes, yes, Devi, yes. So this is okay. where I have to, if we get to that point, then now nobody needs to tell me to have the right feeling. It's like this, that when there is a part of the body, I feel, you know, I have some feeling of responsibility for every part of the body, isn't it? Yes. I don't have a separate feeling for, say, the hand, a preferential feeling for the hand and, uh, you know, uh, not a feeling of relationship for the foot. It's not like that because I can see this whole body as you know, one, unit. one unit and I can see that I am, even though I may not see or even though I may not have that full, you know, see that full responsibility that I have towards the body, still I am able to associate this, that this is all one. So similarly, if I could see everything, you know, in submergence, then I would see everything as connected to me. Then nobody would need to tell me. But right now also, even though I see things as separate, that feeling is still in my control. So I can have this feeling. So for a moment, if you think, okay, let me have this feeling, you can have it. But if you're not aware, again, that assumption plays in that every other unit is separate from me. Then again, my feeling reverts. Can you notice that? Yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah. So that is what it is. Okay. Thank you, Devi. Thank you very much for the verification. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think we'll go for a 10 minute observation here. One more raised hand now. But uh, we'll go ahead and take this 10 minute time to observe this. We've had some discussion. We've had some talk about this. Let's try to observe this within ourselves. What is really in the body and what is in myself? We keep confusing the two. Let us try to observe the feeling and let us also try to see Many activities are happening in the body and the two are separate activities. Let us try to observe for about 10 minutes. Then we'll come back to the questions or the observations. Okay, we have been observing for almost 10 minutes. Uh, Bharti ji uh, has her hand raised and also there was um, mention in the chat about relationship with the sun. I would say that in any relationship, if you can see that you are getting angry, at that moment, it is quite obvious that your feeling is not right, right? Feeling of relationship is not there. There, I would say, just look at the feeling of trust within you. You are having a certain feeling based on the person's activity outside, not being to your liking. But for that, you can see that the activity is representing that person's competence. When you doubt the intention of the other, that's when you become angry. If you can notice that within yourself, you will see that we are doubting the intention of the other. That is the problem. We are mistrusting. So when we ensure the feeling of trust within us, we will see that the problem that is lacking is something to do with competence. 
so then my role can be to help guide the other to build the competence i don't have to doubt the intention because the intention is pure just like my intention so this is how i would answer but we can take more detail uh, tomorrow also uh, uh, nabharti ji are you able to see this uh, yes ma'am good morning ma'am good morning ma'am uh, sometime um our higher official like uh, hod if they assign some work which is not uh, not at all no were you uh, able to see this your question was about the sun no? relation yes yes sun oh, yes ma'am yeah uh, uh, sometime he watch tv for more time so at no, that time were you able to uh, get that answer that I yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am i got the answer ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am right. yes today we will continue with this observation of the self and the body this very chart that we can see we have to try to observe this directly within us we have learned this we have been through the words but we have to directly see this we have been seeing the self like we were discussing now we also have to look at the body and see you know how what we talk about the needs the fulfillment the activities the response these four points in the body how they are different from the self let's try to observe this for today observe directly within us and then we'll take observations tomorrow